Good afternoon, Randomizer fans. Welcome to Chisame versus Christos Owen, Map 2. My name's Vitasia. I'm joined by What's Up. Uh, sorry for the slight delay. We already have the King of Burna to get us started. Here we go. All right, so I'm sure we'll be starving for those bombs here quick and nasty as we pick up Quake, which will make this go a little bit quicker. As we see Christos and Chesame both farming for those bombs. Neither of them getting so far. Yeah, the King of Verna is uh, pretty bad in terms of being able to farm just because it burns through magic. The only efficient way to do it is when you have large clumps of enemies together. Uh, and you do have to hang on to a little bit of magic in order to get through the entire sequence, so it's less than ideal at this point. Yeah, one of the big farming spots that I've noticed with the cane is in the escape where you see all those snakes or ropes, depending on who you talk to, as they call it, and there's like five of them clustered in there. And with 300 groups, they're not going to be hurting for money in the first early part of the game. So they'll be set for a little bit here. Yep, we have bottle vendor money, which is always nice. Ooh, and Christos picks up his first bomb, so he's got back escape. Oh, that's absolutely nice for Christos. So nice. Completely agree. As we come up to our next chest here... Let's see what we've got to pick up there. Eh, just 10 arrows, no big deal. Reminder to everyone, this is game two of Christos versus Chisame. Uh, if you happen to see Chisame's uh, you know, name titles at the start, it'll mention the reference, uh, he mismenued and mismarked his tracker, which caused him to not check certain locations and might have actually cost him the game in game one. So he's maybe slightly salty about that. I can understand that as we pick up a key there and just head off with Zelda. Let's go ahead and get that done, though. And as we, it has been shown in chat already, we do have a French stream up and running, so Make sure you check that out if you want to. Absolutely. Uh, that'll be Speed Gaming Francois. I think I pronounced that right. Don't ask me. I took Spanish in high school. I took Latin. I fake it. Who speaks Latin anymore? Doctors and lawyers and Catholics. I was about to say, I can think of Catholics, but outside of that, not much. Anyway, so we're getting back to the top floor. A uh, little bit slower than we've seen sometimes, but with Burna strats, yeah, kind of expect that a little bit. Still no bomb for Chisame, though. Yes, yeah, we see Christos take a small lead because Chesame was farming for a bomb there, as Christos already got his, so that little slight change of lead, that I'm sure will happen many times throughout this race. I mean, absolutely. The fact that these two, I mean, Christos is a mini legend inside the Legend of Zelda community in and of himself. Chesame has been absolutely on a tear through this tournament. Uh, started off 0-2 in the Swiss and then bursted off five immediate wins in a row and then blanked his opponent in the round of 28, 128. So he had seven wins in a row uh, before this loss to Christos earlier this morning. Um, oh, and some bombs. That is very fortunate for a runner. So Christos had the one. It always helps that with Kakariko, but now Chesame has the one, two to the back of Cat or Escape here. And down goes Dr. Bob's final boss of Escape, as he likes to call it. I mean, I think the hardest thing about that boss is just saving resources for it and not burning through everything. 
Yeah, I have accidentally done that when I was doing bombs once. I didn't save enough bombs. And we get a cape and a big 20 and what people like to call the quote-unquote validation uh, arrow, even though it's not really validating much, unless you like to validate yourself. Yeah, the single arrow is a little bit unusual. We like to see it only because it's a meme, and it's a meme that needs to die. Uh, worth noting, I mean, we get the cape, which is one of our possible entryways into Aghanim, and we have both our invincibility items before we get out of the sewer, which is... ugh. Yep, like you were saying, it's pointing towards Aga already, and they both skipped the sanctuary chest because they have been counting their items, which just shows how elite these learners are to be able to do something like that. We see Christos looks like he's uh, avoiding the lumberjack ledge for now. Uh, Chisame does look like he's going to give us a peek up here at the lumberjack ledge in the meantime. So this could be some interesting intel for Chis. Uh, and for bomb pole. That's absolutely nice for both of our runners there at the tier two tree pole. And they both find it almost exactly at the same time as Christos is falling down into the thief's hut. Getting the shovel, so are we ready for a fetch quest? I mean, I'll only sing it if it's if we end up finding something there, but that's okay. Fair enough. We saw bombs on Lumberjack Ledge, so that's not automatically pointing us there. So I did miss what was in the typical mushroom spot. Well, I think Christos avoided it, and yeah, big 20. If you didn't get that 300, you can see some runners going ahead and picking it up just for safety's sake to get us through Kakariko, but otherwise, uh, we're doing reasonably well here. Christos is going to give us our first look at uh, what is in the basement in Blind. Oh, he needs to be careful not to accidentally run into something, because he's only got well, now one and a half hearts, and we got the Lack Meringue popping up there, a big 20, and a piece of heart. So much, so many broken hearts in Blind's basement, so he's a, he's a heartbreaker, that's it. And we found the Book of Medora in there, as we're about to have a virtual high five here, as they cross across Blind's hut. Now that's not true, Chad. It's totally useful. The book is incredibly useful. And the bug net is absolutely required. Of course. Ooh, get a first sword there. The book gives us the ability to read ancient Hyrulean, so it's nice. It gets us in the desert, if nothing else, and allows us to read. Ooh, and we get the ether medallion. I mean, nice. So we already have two medallions already. We have a sword, so we can actually use them, but I always get nervous getting all the medallions relatively early, uh, just because I want to avoid going to Misery Mire and Turtle Rock as long as I possibly can. I think that's most runners included, because just those dungeons are so long and painful. No one likes doing them unless they can do them almost in go mode. And we pick a Powda, the best item in the game, as it's called. Well... The blue cane is the best item in the game, IMO, but it's another fetch quest, though. It is a fetch quest, as we need either the mirror in Dark World Axis or a hammer for it. And it gives you a nice lifeline later in the game if you need it, though I don't think either of these runners will. All right, in the meantime, Christos is going to show us the south part. Uh, check what's real quick here in the library. Just a pizza heart, no big deal. Let's see what our race game has for us today. Nope, we're just going to check then actually do it if need be. And yeah, nothing in the race game as well, but we are going to see Christos immediately go over and cash in this shovel, which is a smart move, uh, opting not to do the standard saving quit and just route this in right over because these early fetch quest items do unlock some some 
early potential for us. So heads up play by Christos and a lot of love. It's very nice during this time as we're low on health, but in the long run games, we had to probably been skipped. Right, it looks like Chesame is going to do the same thing as we see Christos going down to the swamp entrance that I can't think of the actual name for right now. The dam. There we go. Well, let's see what this dam area holds for us. Well, we're going to get the full dam tour, so hopefully everyone's ready for that. And it's just a dam 50 rupees there. Let's see what the journey of the dam gives us. There's our first map check from Chisame. It looks like vanilla green pendant and then two crystals on Hera and Desert Palace there. And it's just those damn bombs. You know, I would think after those bombs had been submerged for so long, they really wouldn't be very good, but ah, this is a magical world. Things work. Well, if anything, you, as long as they're sealed correctly, all you'd have to do is switch out the wicks on them and then you'll be good. Christos is showing us. Yep. Man, he's smooth going through here. Ooh, and a nice refill. Ooh, and a fire rod. Nice. We finally get some kind of progression. Well, it's it's theoretical progression in the fact that it's another weapon, but it doesn't really unlock much of anything for us, at least at the moment. It gives us a light source of nothing else right now. Well, light slash fire source, however you want to word that. Alright, so not too much progression, so we're definitely going to check out Ice Rod Cave up here. I wonder what we're holding up here, if anything. Well, let's see. Left we have Ice Rod Cave, we still have Agina's Cave unlocked to us. Uh, we also have the eastern area, and then there's that desert area uh, that might have some level of progression for us as well. Well, we can get into desert, like you mentioned. We have the ledge, um, the whole eastern area. So yeah, we've got a decent amount right now. Wonder where the progression shall show up. Oh, Chisme's got to be careful. One heart. Okay. Well, he'll probably do a save and quit here and get two more hearts back, so no big deal. And exactly what's happening, so not too bad now that he got an ice rod. Let's see what Sahashala's closet has for us today. Is the old man burning some stuff for us? Ooh, and get some divergence. As Chesme looks to be going to desert. Oh, but boots in the back of Saha's closet. That no. means that even if desert is boots locked, uh, we can at least get into it and get whatever items are there. That's pretty significant for Christos there. And he logically says, nah, I'm done with the area for now. Let's go hit up Bonk Rocks and then go over to desert because... I just need to lift the upgrade and then I could finish this. Absolutely. Um, we still need a few other items. Oh, flippers! Man, immediate value from those boots. Now we got um, Zora logic and the, well, his entire domain actually. Have plenty of rubies. And it looks like Christos is going to run right over there. Or, yep, he's going for it. Sees just a full heart container on Hylia's Island, and is going to be checking Hobo. Uh, I gotta say, you know, that early route divergence, just Eastern versus Desert, that book might have debated Chisame a little bit, saw a breadcrumb, and 
right now, all the value is on Christos's end. Yep. As we see what the hobo gets, and it's the lamp. No more dark rooms. More importantly than that, that is access. If we so need to, to go ahead and do Aga if we need to. We have the lamp, we have a sword, and we have the cape to get past the door. So if this is our only access, because we still need three items to get into the Dark World, we have the capacity to do so. Yep, I wasn't even paying attention, but yeah, like you said, that's access to Aga, which no one wants to see. Well, Chet likes to see it. Runders, not so much. And Waterfall Fairy gives us a pizza heart and 50 rubies. And there's the Moon Pearl. So that's our first item in the progression that Chisame finds. The big key. So it doesn't appear to be boots locked, but we haven't seen what's on that ledge yet. Or I. Yeah, whatever. I can't speak. All right, so Christos immediately turning in his Zora, and it's a lift upgrade. Lift upgrade. Oh, the value out of just those boots from Eastern. Holy cow! Hookshot. Oh, no, hookshot. Oh no. Oh, Shisame. Chisame will get everything, but it's... Man, that's... I mean, the progression that Christos is able to get just from going over to Eastern first to get the boots uh, will have so much. He'll be able, with the power gloves, he'll be able to go ahead and clear it out, and it is a crystal. He'll get the hook shot uh, with the mitt, uh, gloves and lamp. He'll be able to go ahead and clear out uh, go up to Death Mountain, hook shot across. Uh, this is really just a single decision that's going to give Christos a good four or five minute lead on top of everything else. Yep, because like you were saying, it's going to prevent him from having to double dip there. And Chesame finally finding his speed. And is he going to do all of these turns? Interesting. Yeah, with those boots, him knowing where those are, he might be gambling that Christos found those boots and immediately left, which he did. And it's a reasonable gamble that if you find something of value, you would leave the eastern area. So he, Chisame is gambling right now that something else is here. Something else is pulling him in this direction. Uh, maybe the, the glove upgrade, but we know where those are going to be. Uh, this is all sorts of not good news for Chisame right now. Well, unless he finds the other glove upgrade, which would be nice for him, but we still need to figure that one out. Well, we get item number one, which is just a piece of heart. So Christos gets both items out of Desert Palace, so we know he's not even going to check the big treasure chest because he's already gotten both items. Uh, he'll go right to the back and go ahead and take out Lanmo. Now, he's got Fire Rod and Sword and Burna, so yeah, he's well equipped for this. As you see, Chess may pick up the second item, which is just a big 20, unless something turns around here quickly, it might be a bust on Eastern. Christos is just running through Eastern, and we get one of her items, and he's going to check out of there. Chess is done with Eastern. Didn't find anything of value, which means he's going to be cashing in these boots over here in Bonk Rocks. He's going to find the flippers, and suddenly it's all going to set in that, oh no, a horrible mistake has been made. It's 
it's all about those gambles, and right now, Christmas is just paid off. Yeah, I can't even say that what Chisame did was unreasonable, given that early book he was gambling, that something of value was going to be in desert, and he needed to go there. Now, he got the Moon Pearl, which was nice. The problem was, everything else he needed, needed to use the logical sequence that Christos did. Chisame is going to do it all, and then go, oh... Like, you get the feeling Chisame knows he's behind right now. So and early you, in this match. And while you were explaining that, if you blinked, you missed Landmo go down to Christos with a quickness as he picked up his map and is done with his first crystal at 21 minutes in. And yeah, that's, we are, yeah, we have Hammer, or we don't have Hammer, we just have one lift upgrade and the Moon Pearl, so I imagine we're going to go right up to Death Mountain. We have logical access to the Old Man, Spectacle Rock, plus the eight items on East Death Mountain, so in total, ten item locations up on Death Mountain. At this point, the, the logical gamble is going to be we have some sort of progression up on Death Mountain and not over in Aga. I will say, if there's nothing up here on East Death Mountain and we still have to do Aga, then it's possible Chisame can still play catch up from here. Aga is kind of a great equalizer when you're running around through the entire world waiting for something. That's very true, and we'll find out here momentarily if Christos finds something that breaks this seed wide open. And chat pointing out, Chisame actually is skipping going up to Zora right now. He's gambling, nothing's there. Uh, and almost tunnel visioning the, this hookshot right now because he uh, sees the logical access behind, uh, you know, possibly getting up to Death Mountain, although he still doesn't have real access. We don't have a lift upgrade. He's got to get over to Zora right now. Unless he's going to do Aga right now, and just a blue ruby on top of Spectacle Rock. What is yep, he's doing it. Was that so oh good? man, this is a gamble. This is such a gamble, in particular since he has access to Zora. Who man. Well, well, this is very interesting divergence. Hopefully for Chesame, it's a good gamble, but we won't know for a minute. I could see why he wants to do this, especially after the change up there in the first one. And thank you, Samora, Samora C, for your sub. I kind of hope that's how this mountain is going to go. We got a small green rupee to start out with. So five more treasure chests. Uh, six, actually, because we also have Spiral Cave. So we got bombs. A lot of love. A lot of love. I say stop in the cave of love. We got a bottle, so we got sick kid back in logic. Or back in. Let's see what Spiral Caves has for us. So with Sick Kid and then Spiral Cave, but otherwise, uh, just 10 arrows on the floating island. This hasn't led to any progression. I mean, a, an effective fetch quest here for the bottle, but this is looking like a pretty good play from Chisme, at least for the time being. Spiral Cave will determine that. Survey says just a lot of love. So it looks like Chesame is on the right track. Unless Christos wants to do that fetch quest really quick, but I don't know. Oh, he's gonna do it, so we'll see how this pays out for Christos.
and sick kid's about to tell us what he's been hoarding and possibly making himself sick with, which is dun 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 massive sword upgrade. So that definitely points us at Aga. So Christos is going to have a little bit easier time, but still same direction. Yeah, that's really interesting that every time it's an Aga required seed, for whatever reason, you get both ways. You can have both the cape and the Master Sword. I don't know why, but it's, it's it always seems to be the case. So right now, Christos has the item advantage, but Chesame has the time advantage by doing this jump a little bit earlier. Not a bad deal which is probably going to help him out in the long run. Yeah, so Chisame will be probably looking to route in Light and Dark Death Mountain together at this point in time, uh, once he knows where those gloves are. Worth noting that, yeah, we still don't... He still needs to go up to Zora eventually, but he'll be able to route that in maybe together with a catfish check if he finds the mirror, uh, make it a little bit more efficient for himself. And that was a friendly Aga. I didn't count too many blue balls there. I didn't either, so it was very quick. I wonder what Pyramid has, if it has anything of logic for us, such as the mirror or anything of that sort. And it is the hammer. Oh, wow. So it was a hammer on the pyramid. That is amazing. Well, that just gave us our second area of Dark World Axis, because now we can get into it over by Thieves Town and whatnot. So he's going to go check Catfish, it seems. Too bad we don't have the mirror yet, but maybe Catfish does for him. Well, Catfish has the mirror, and I imagine he's going to do, you know, kind of a long routing here. No, he's not doing Catfish. He's going immediately over the long way to Village of Outcasts. This is... Uh, a significant routing thing. Uh, looks like pendants in both Skullwoods and Thieves Town, which is interesting because those are the two dungeons you can clear right now. Yep, with Pod and Swamp being our 5 6 crystals. That's interesting. So that access is Pyramid Fairy. As Chris got a little jabated there by the guards. Chisame saw a bottle up on the the wonderful uh, bumper cave ledge and didn't get it, even though that would be his first bottle. That is interesting because they would give him access to sick kid, but he's not even worried about it. So let's see what kind of progression, if any, we find here in Skull Woods. This Christos is about ooh the bow. Oh just... man. There's one of our five six crystals, and we just need a mirror for the other one. We're on to a pyramid fairy check. Oh, no gloves to get it. He needs the gloves. That's right. Oh yeah, that yeah. To get up to the bumper ledge, you need the gloves, which he skipped. I mean, how often are we in this part of the world without gloves, especially when we know where one of them is? Not very often, and yeah, it's strange that we have one of them with it and one without. Chat pointing out, Chisame is in heavy gamble mode, and I'll tell you something. Whenever you're up against Christos, the general rule of thumb is uh, probably gamble heavily. He is one of the best, uh, not just in randomizer, but also in NMG runs. He's just, uh, I mean, unless you have to gamble to win, unless you're right up there in terms of execution with him. Uh, most people have to do some pretty severe gambles to have a chance to beat Christos. So I do not blame Chisame at all, knowing that he would have to beat Christos not once, but twice in a row. Yeah, given the fact that his playoffs is on the line here, he's got to go all in. Like the only person I can think of off the top of my head that's Seems to have Christos's number is our tournament winner, Ben, who keeps knocking Christos out of these tournaments. Oh, Christos doing his check. And not too much there. 
only found a bow so far as Chess Mace looks to be doing the back of blind here. Or Thief Town, not blind. Let's see if Hype Cave has anything to be hype about. Oh, I'm actually excited for Hype Cave because we've seen so many other checks at this point in time. Feels like something might be here. Bombo, so we have access to everything now. More rubies. We got a mail upgrade and some rubies, so a little bit of love, a lot of cash, and some clothing. I'll give that a 4 of 10 hype cave. You know, Bombos may or may not be required, and Christo certainly doesn't need the blue mail, but it's still nice, so I'll give that a 4 of 10. All right, I'll go with your metrics on that one because I'm not very sure how that counts. It gets counted. All right, as we get to see the southern half of everything here by Christo, see what Stompy has today for us. Just that love and feeling is what Stumpy's got for us. As Chess Amaze is about to open up this chest and get the fight for blind ready. Got a hundred rubies there, and Christos begins his dig in game. Let's see how much he has to dig today. Not too bad but not a very big win there, but still needing uh, bombs as we're chugging through here. I haven't seen any bomb upgrades. And Chris is going back here. He's gonna go to, yeah, he's doing a hero. Well, it's another crystal that he can have access to. It's just, the problem is it's another climb up Death Mountain at this point in time, which, that you really try to minimize the amount of climbing that you have to do up Death Mountain if you can. Just May has not been up there at all. Uh, yeah. We'll see what but ends up happening. It's three items for Christos because he can do the Ether Tablet, the two in Hera, and like you said, get the next crystal progression there. I have not been counting items on Chisame's side, so I do not know if this is going to be... I mean, I'm presuming he has, and that something is on blind at this point in time. Christos finding a big 20 on the Ether tablet. And, oh, he just barely scoots around that thing. Man, look at this health difference between the two. Chisame is at six hearts. Christos Owen is at a full row of 10. Well, we're not quite into basement mode yet for Christos, as lines in the phase two for Chess and I. A perfect blind, perfect blind. No damage, just a piece of heart though. So that was worthless. Well, Chris is going to be taking a quick hook across here, see what we've got. We haven't gotten anything yet. Let's see what we can do there for this. Silvers! So once he goes to Skull Woods, he will have a nice setup there with the bow. I didn't see Chess and May clear out some village battle cast. Did I miss something? Uh, no, I do not believe so. There was not a ton there in village of outcast. Gotcha. So Christos with his next crystal at this point in time. So a two crystal lead over Chess and May, at least at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
and Chesme is going to have to do a longer routing here to get to Hive Cave. As Christos is going to go check up here, getting that, we have basement confirmed. So let's go put that fire rod to use after we take a quick tea break for Christos. I like how you know Christos so well that you know it's not a coffee break, it's a full on tea break. Well, he is British, so he kind of goes ahead and takes that as he is setting up his death war. But yes, Christos and his tea is all about the rage. Yeah, and looks like he's not taking the tea break. He's uh, taking tiles to the face instead, which I got to tell you, it's my opinion that tea is a lot easier to wake up to than a tile to the face. I completely agree, but I understand why he's doing it. So I'd have probably take it one more there, but that's just me. Let's see what we got down here. Chesame's getting trolled going towards pod. And survey says a little piece of heart. <laughs> and it's a full heart refill. Oh, that's horrible. That was not what he was looking for. No death warp for you, Christos. And chat is loving it as they are going nuts about that. It does look like he's going to use the opportunity, though, uh, knowing he's got the hammer, and now he's got full hearts. Hey, uh, why not go ahead and check what's over here on... Uh, spike Cave. In the Spike Cave, which is logical. That's one last thing he has to come back up here for uh, during Dark Death Mountain checks. All for 300 rubies. Not really needed as this machine's already been rich enough as Chesame is exploring Mullet Mansion here as it's appearing to be so far. Yep, the logic requires that there are going to be six, uh, four keys in the front six treasure chests here in... And there's one of the not keys. So uh, Chisme is going to see what else we got. It's likely that that vanilla big key location will probably have a, uh, a key. So we're going to avoid it for now. If you get nothing but keys in these next couple treasure chests, you know that there's going to be something there. Are we getting a pedestal check by Christos? It appears to be so. Huh. Uh, Get hype for this check real quick, chat. It's oh, another mail upgrade, so that's that, that's not good for Chisame. Yep, that means it is dead to Christos, and he is out of here. That's, I wonder how long it'll be for him to check that. It looks like Chisame did end up finding uh, the other glove upgrade uh, in the front. So that's our second item in the front half. Uh, man, Chisame, you would... This would be really nice if you had the gold gloves right now. Um, it'll just I don't know when you're heading up that way. I really am hoping for Mirror somewhere in Palace of Darkness to pull Chisame up towards that uh, catfish area. Yep, that would definitely give him a busted open seat here. But I have a feeling we're going to see Christos with the, as we get Fisher Price Shield there. That he's going to be the one that busts open the seat a lot quicker just because of those gloves. And Christos is an open out of skull wood, so he's probably going to go over there to take care of this himself, also.
Yep, seems to be a logical play right at the moment. And he's on his way up. Remember, Christos did not even go to Eastern Palace to begin with, so he may dip up in there knowing that not only is it three items, but it is also uh, possible to uh, go ahead and get the green pendant. Uh, maybe not, though. Depends on what he finds. Chisame does end up taking a death warp back to the beginning. Does find a master sword there in the dark room as well. So uh, nice, nice sword pickup. It's gonna be a little bit. I mean, Christos is gonna get tempered out of this. Where was that sword difference then? I'm trying to remember, but I'm drawing a blank right now. I want to say it was maybe Death Mountain, but I'm not sure. Sick Kid, right. Sick Kid had yep. it. There we go. All right, so Sick Kid is another one. So it's not too far out of where Chesme is if he finds a mirror, but we'll see. Well, he's still got to get a bottle, too. Well, that's true, but he knows where one is. Just a quick chaunt over to uh, Bumper Ledge, and he's got himself a bottle. So he could pick one up another way if he ever gets over the sort of area. Chisme with a clean terrapin room there and is on his way to the Helmosaur King directly. Oh man, Christos absolutely putting those silvers to work. It will definitely make his fight here a lot quicker though. He will have that tempered sword, which will make it quick also. There's Christos' Titan's Mitts. And Chisme says, yeah, I'm having some health issues. I'm just going to keep it. And the flute is there. So that's, I mean, that's going to pull Chisame over into the, uh, back to Kakariko Village, but still no bottle. Nope, and that will probably, no, well, he may, never mind, I don't know what I was thinking. He still needs to do deserts. Yeah, he needs to do desert. He needs to really go up to Death Mountain at some point. He needs to go to Zora, which has the other glove upgrade. The problem is the more progression Chisame finds, the more he's going to put off going to Zora, which might jibate him quite a bit. Yep, and I'll get ready for the playing of Hyrule National Anthem here. And stand and remain standing. So to kind of break it down for everyone who's just joining us uh, as we're going through here, there was a early route divergence here between Christos and Chisame. Uh, they found the book early, so Chisame ended up going down south over to the desert area. Christos ended up doing the more traditional routing and checked out what was in Sahasrala's uh, hut. Christos found the boots, which led to flippers in the bonk rocks, which led him up to Zora, which had uh, the first lift upgrade. Chisame went to desert first, saw the hookshot on the on the uh, torch. Meanwhile, so left, did some other routing, went, then went to check out Sahasrala, found the boots, found the flippers, did not go up to Zora. 
booked it right back to Desert Palace where he knew the hook shot was. So Chisame has not yet gone back to those gloves and that's just a simple left-right determination has really made all the difference between these runners up to this point in time. Agreed, and it's just, like you said, the more things he gets, the longer it's going to keep him away from that area. As we see him checking out Death Mountain, which I'm sure Christos will probably go to Dark Death Mountain after this. Yeah, Chisme might be a little bit happy right now, knowing that, well, you have logical access now to Dark to Death Mountain. Can't get up to Dark Death Mountain, and what's worse, uh, you've had access to the gloves the whole time, Chis. Yeah, that's the sad part of it. And Christos will definitely unlock his flute, which will make him screw around this map a lot quicker. As chat's point now, but at least this time it's just a random location skip instead of a miss tracker issue this time. Well, that was a fairly clean room there for Christos as he gets ready to go knock Helmosaur in the dome. And there's Chesame's bottle, so he's gonna go hit up Sit Kid for his silvers. You know, it is nice to know that you know there's a limit to how much Chisame will be able to find at this point in time. We're still looking for Mirror, we're still looking for Kena Samaria, and we're still looking for the Ice Rod. Um, I mean, we've got lots of progression, but the world is much more opened up to Christos. Chisame will eventually be funneled into that direction, sooner rather than later. And also, I want to note here, as soon as Christos goes to Kakariko to unstuck the deck, he can also check the Mad Batter. Mad Batter, he can also go to Misery Mire if he wants. Like I said, the world just opens up for Christos. Yeah. And here we are for our second plane of the National Anthem by Christos. Yeah, it looked for a while that uh, Chisame made a pretty bold and a good call doing Aga early. The problem is that the longer he puts off going to Zora and the more checks that Christos can get into those other areas, just the longer it's going to be for him. Christos, it looks like he's going uh, right, just a beeline towards Ice Palace here. That is interesting play already, so I don't blame him because we got Fire Rock and Bombos. Just interesting because most people don't like doing this. I like it, but let's see it. <laughs> Chesame doing those spin strats to go ahead and get him a tempered damage so he doesn't need to switch to the sword. And down goes Troll Dorm without any big trolling today. But we still have the second visit from him later. You know, it is worth noting that I don't think Christos has been over to the Village of Outcast area at all. And I think a large portion of that is because both Skull Woods and Thieves Town are pendants. 
So he maybe didn't value going over there. Clearly he's valuing going over to the Crystal Dungeons first. And we didn't find anything of value. I mean, he okay, he did find the bow in Skull Woods, but after that, I mean, he's completely avoided it. Well, it's not necessarily a bad play because it worked out for him very well. As we see, he's trekking through all these dungeons without any issues and still picking up progression. And that is just amazing for him at this point in time. And as we see, Chessmate didn't even do the coffee break there, so decided to take it. And hopefully he's at a different part I didn't see there to see if he's going to get full refilled or not. Let's see if, if Chiss, I don't know where Chisame is on his life count. We'll see if he gets heart trolled too. No, okay. He was in a better position than Krista, so it works out nicely for him. But we'll see what happens here. Will he go to a spike cave check also? Looks as if he... Nope, he's going back to the right side. Where is he going? Did he do... Uh, did he do... I don't think he did Spiral Cave yet. That was what I was going to ask, but I, got, I noticed he got Dead Rock right there, so I lost my track of thought. Alright, let's go do Spiral Cave as Crystal is melting away Ice Palace here. So, Chisame is finishing up his. Oh, and that was a uh, that was the psych heart, I guess, in Spiral Cave as well. Oh, interesting. So, where is Chisame gonna take off to now? Is the question. Turn in sick kid, get his tempered sword. Yep, that's where it looks like it to me. Though he still doesn't have magic, so he can't check out the mad batter. So we're still question marks there. He's going to do... What is he going to do? It's perfect time for Christos to get half magic here. He's finishing up. I think the only thing he has left is the ice tea room. And he's making gambles. Uh... I take that back. We are going to see a mad batter check. So this will be interesting. And it looks like Christos find the last of his items. So he's go. No, nope, never mind. I take it back. I don't know what I'm saying. So Christos is going to go up here. We still have ice tea room to check. I think he's he's counting everything at this point. Yeah, and we went ahead and did that. All right. There's Chesame going to check now that he's going back to the dark world here. Chisame might even be checking. Yeah, he's going to go up here and check the pedestal. We've seen Christos check it, so we know it's just a, you know, dirty laundry. Yeah, that would be some interesting laundry to pick up there, given it's stuck in some in there, so it'd be kind of funky. Go. Christos is going to go for his cold stare fight as it looks like Chesame is going to join him in Ice Palace real quick. Well, he can't. Not until he makes a visit to Zora. Oh, fair enough. Then that's where it looks like he's going finally, so he's going to get his lift upgrade finally and his bottle. If he didn't have confirmation earlier that he's very behind, he's about to. Yep, I expect to see some frustration slashes coming up here. Uh, that was a textbook cold stair fight. Didn't let the puffs out of the corner. Alright, and Christos picks up that next medallion. And we're still on the search for that mirror, so we can finally break the rest of this open 
and then truly start searching everything. The crystals head over to Misery Mine or Death Mountain now. Go into death or misery minor, so we'll get to see what and her medallion is going to be needed there. And check the shed really quick. Oh, we double up here. Both of them are heading there. Both of them skipping to check the pendant because it's not really needed because since we have them all. And yeah, no reason to check. Oh, oh, mushroom. Mushroom. Hmm. Interesting. I'm sure, Chrysalis will go turn that in real quick. Do you want to do a fetch quest? Apparently, Christos does, and so does Chisame. Let's see what the witch is holding for us if it's Gresham or if it's Garbo. Just some money, so not really a big deal today. I mean, some, I mean, at least they're moderately priced drugs. They're not super cheap drugs. Yeah, it's not too bad, but, yeah. Looks like we're seeing Dark Death Mountain from Christos now. And Chess made right on his heels. Yeah, Chisame still has some catch up to do. It is an ice palace and a desert palace behind in terms of progression. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's Chisame has played this really well. I think he's done everything he could do to keep himself into this game. It was just rough going early for Chisame with that gamble over to desert. Yeah, that gamble really did not pay off and has put him in the back seat right now. Well, as we see, Cursus keep his commanding lead right now, but things could change on logic decisions, so we'll see what happens here. Hmm. What is Chess? Interesting that Chess may decided to come up here to get into the Dark World. I guess he wants to check out Hookshot Cave first. As we see, Bombos is there as he pops that bad boy open. Well, there's Ice Rod, so that's one of our required items we were looking for. Just camping out next door in Hookshot Cave. Meanwhile, Christos, Big 20, what else do we got? Another bottle. Another bottle, so not too much there, but not really expected. Where's Crystal's going to head out to now to complete it? Uh, is he going to try getting into Eastern now? Maybe? Yep, we're going to do an Eastern now, and then later we'll probably go ahead and do Meyer trying to find that uh, stat. Oh, wow, well, I just lost my train of thought. Samaria, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, this is good news for Chisame, at least, because if it is somewhere in Eastern Palace, he's already dipped in there once, so he can at least go through there a little bit faster than Christos can right now. Yep, and both of them will be doing it with their silver arrow, so it'll be nice, quick kills on everything here. And Chisame's hitting up his house first gonna flute away, but where's he gonna flute to? It looks he like Ice, ice palace. palace. Yep, that's what I'm sitting to. Well, that's a logical play, and you can't necessarily blame him for making that logical play. No, not at all. As we saw Crystals do it earlier, and so it's just kind of follow the leader on his end as we're seeing Crystals. Picking up what Chesme has already done until we see him go back towards the big key there. Yeah, options right now in chat pointing out Pendant Dungeons, Smith's King's Tomb, and Misery Mire. 
Although Misery Mire is probably the last option you want to because it takes quite a bit to get down in there uh, if you don't already have it. So that, I imagine, is going to be the last place that these runners check. Although, if Chisame is looking for a low percent play to try to get back into it, that might be something we see him do later. Interesting that we always have the scheming chat to keep us in check to see what kind of sadistic things can also happen here. As we see Christos going towards that big key chest so we can find out what is left here. And Chessman getting a little trolled by that jelly there. Vanilla Big Key. It is worth noting that Chiss did kind of nope out of there after getting to the point where he would be locked out of dark rooms. I think he was looking for some sort of progression. So there could be something in this big treasure chest. Okay, just a big 20. And now time to go take out the Arnos Knights with the quickness of those overpowered silvers. And chat is pointing out that this will be a 100% item completion there if we don't get that minus that mail upgrade and possibly butter depending on where that is. Well, and our shields are looking a little bit skimpy too, so. Yeah, fair enough. But the tracker will have a lot of it completed minus, you know, some dungeons. Y items. I get it. You're talking about the Y items, which is, yeah, you're right there. And Christos gets a nice big old burrito for his troubles. And the green pendant. Let's see what Sahashala has for us today. All right, so Sahashrala, Shamalama Ding Dong, Suracha Sauce, whatever name you prefer to call him. What value does he have for us today? A gigantic waste of time. Yep. So where's Christos going to go dip next? He looks to be going here to... Interesting. Not technically completable yet, but we'll see if there's any progression in this Mire. You know, with so much overworld that's open to Christos, he's making the play over here into Misery Mire now. Um, if it's not, he, I mean, there's a high percentage chance that there's something here. Uh, there is a lot of overworld. It's awkward overworld kind of without the mirror. So he's making the play here to Misery Mire. Not a bad idea. We'll see if it's a single dip or a double dip or a triple dip. We'll see. Kind of down the triple dip though. Thank you, Dead Eye Lord, for your Twitch Prime subscription for three months in a row. Alright, so Chisame is following the back end, and oh my god! French Vanilla Chain of Samaria. Well, this is just completely ready for go mode on there. We just need that mirror. And then Christos is really going to be off to the races there. And so the hunt continues. 
you know, how appropriate that the cane is in French vanilla when we're also broadcasting this race on the Speed Gaming French channel. So if you are a native French speaker or just enjoy hearing the, the dulcet sounds of the French language, go over to uh, Speed Gaming, I'm going to mispronounce it, Francois, French, whatever it is. Speed Gaming French. For all your French vanilla needs. Yes, very true. I'm not sure if that's Francois or Francis or... We'll have to get a check on that later. As chat is running away with the French. No. Francais. Okay. Francais. There we go. And Francois. Chat says this again. <laughs> the baguette stream. I speak English and bad American. That's all I got. What? No sarcasm? That's uh, just a regional dialect. Gotcha. And Christos is going to go take care of Vidi here since he seems to have everything he needs from this dungeon and done with it. Chesame, on the other hand, is going to go do some other things here. He's going to go do King's Tomb, it looks like. Oh man, that dash. We've got a butter sword. Oh, there's that King's Tomb, so uh, that's not going to give Chiss too much benefit there. Nope, it will knock off some extra swings in the Ganon fight, but that's really about it. And he's going to be joining Christos here in the Meyer area. And we'll see once. Christos takes down Viddy with his four hearts there. But he'll probably one cycle it with. Oh, nope, he's gonna get some fairy action. I like it. And fall down hole. Come on, Christos. Shame, Christos. Shame. Vitrius is down, and we get a little key for it, and Christos gets his next crystal. Gonna see, probably do some overworld, or is he gonna make the dip in Turtle Rock here? That's the question. I would like to think he'd do some overworld. I don't know, though. I mean, we are a mirror from go mode at this point in order to access Swamp Palace, so we know nothing's gonna be in Pyramid Fairy. Uh, I mean, it's possible that he goes right up there, but there's too much overworld, and if he can avoid going up the mountain, uh, what is... I mean, he's already been up here three times, but he's making the play. Yep, he is going to go do it. Not a bad thing. It's given him another crystal, if nothing else, and helps him eliminate a lot of locations also. But you never know. It could be the gutsy gamble that he needs to do. And... But it's a crystal, so not really gutsy. Chat asking, is there any way for Chisame to get back into it? Yes! Yes, it's possible. I could also have Anna Ferris be knocking on my door in, nearby. Uh, the percentage likelihoods are about the same. Just depends on where that trolley mirror is going to be. We shall set everything up for the rest of this seed. And if Chesame can get it before Christos does, because it's in one of these overworld or pendant dungeons. We know it's not in two of the three. Well, actually, I think we know it's not in any of the three pendant dungeons, now that I think about that. Mm -hmm. 
And to answer that question, Chisme found the Butter Sword in King's Tomb. Go ahead, you were saying something? Uh, well, I'm thinking right now, you know, for the best thing that can happen to Chisame is that it's going like he does if the Jeremiah loop has mirror. I mean, if we have some mirror smiths, one that would be absolutely trolly, and that would be best case scenario if Chisame does that. And it's not here in Turtle Rock, and Christos opts to dip Thieves Town so he can get some catch up time. I mean, uh, that's kind of the best case scenario for Tissime at this point in time. As we see, Christos use a nice cane dash through there, and he's gonna go ahead and keep going on this. Let's go see what. The ch okay, so my question for you is: chop, chain chomps or bow wows? Oh, chain chomps. Okay, because there's been a bit of a discussion on what it is, given that. It's called the Bow Wows in, uh, in the later result of the game. I refuse to call them Bow Wows because of a really poor American rapper who also goes by the name Bow Wow, so that name is tainted to me forever. I will accept that, and that's the same reason why I do chain chomps there. like we have an item here in the vanilla big key chest. What is it? Just a key. Never mind. Key, key for, for key. key. Yep. Yep. As we see, Chesame is going to do the same play here. And it's going to save him a little bit of time over Christos on the Trinex fight, given he has that butter sword. But not too much. going to be able to check Mimic Cave since we don't have that mirror, but we'll see what the big chest holds for us today. You know, I think Chisame might have made another mental error there. He, as soon as he finished Misery Mire, he should have just gone right over, cleared out Desert Palace. He knows that he gets all the items out of there, already has them, but I think while he's over there, he got to go ahead and get this crystal to avoid another dip into the same area. So it's really unfortunate that that's more time lost for Chisame. That's time that he absolutely cannot afford right now. He would have had to do a save and quit to get back to the light world uh, to get to the desert. And there's the mirror. Oh. We're in go mode at 113.36. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no mirror, but yeah, now we're in go mode. Yep, so Christos is going to go mode swamp, and he'll be off to the races while Chesme still has to pick up his uh, Desert Palace one, then go into swamp. Or will he do it the other way around? We'll see. Last treasure chest on Laser Bridge has the last key. And Christos is having a bit of time with that hard hat jelly there. Alright, he's on his way as Chess is getting into his first Poke Room there. You gotta love them Cane Dash strats, it looks so amazing when it happens. Now, do we see Christos go do the behind the strats, or does he wait for the head to come out? 
Of course he's he's gonna take Trinex from behind. Of course it's Christos. I am just trying to see if he would do the normal thing or if he'd go for a little interesting. And first two faces of Trinex is down, and the head pops out at him. Chat is already predicting their winner here, so we'll see if it holds up there. Because it is right now Christos' game to lose. And this is all basically paid off to that Eastern Palace play that Christos made early in the game. And it's set this seed so drastically apart, it's ridiculous. Christos finishes up and gets his thing, and he's gonna mirror down to the dam. So we'll get another dam tour real quick. Yep, and Christos, knowing that he's in go mode, this is going to be uh, a little bit quick, I would say. Yep, I don't even foresee him checking any chests at this point in time because he's well set to finish this seat out. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the typical loadout is for NMG, to be perfectly honest, but Blue Mail on its own uh, and Silvers, he is set. Typical NMG is Tempered, Green Mail, Silverless. Do you know how many hearts, roughly? I don't remember. I want to say like 12 or so, but I'm not certain. Mir was in the Turtle Rock, so Chesme will be picking it up shortly. No, he already did. Never mind. Yep, it was in that roller room right there. Alright, so chat is telling us it's like 14 hearts. It looks to be 13 to 14 if he takes ink, so there we go. We have confirmation thanks to our friendly chat reminding us how well it is. Chisame realizing, oh, I need the last one and has to drink a blue pot. At the very end, oh, that's too bad, Chiss. Yep, that is a sad having to use that, but hey, it's better than having to die since he hadn't opened up the safety door, and Christos is about to go mode this dungeon here. Pick up this key, head back, take out Argus. Chat predicting that we might see a mirror shield in Game's Tower. We'll see if that happens. Um, so it's getting to be about that there time, Latasia. Do we want to start talking about that game that Christos is about to unlock? Well, uh, we can do that. Uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do it. We're not going to start it quite yet until Christos Owen gets his final crystal, but there are 22 treasure chests in Ganon's Tower that can possibly contain the Ganon's Tower Big Key. Now, go ahead and get your guesses in chat, 1 through 22. Uh, wait until I hit the start timer, because if you are a subscriber to any of the Speed Gaming Network of channels, or uh, are have donated at least 250 bits, we will go ahead and enter your name into a leaderboard. So wait for it, guys. I I don't think we've started it yet. All right, Christos has taken down those Argi with quickness. Still, I haven't seen the start of it. Must I miss something? No, I haven't started it yet. <laughs> All right. Well, just about ready to start it, and there goes Argus. So we should see something here shortly. Yeah, very shortly. 
All right, and we're going to ready. There he goes. And Chad is off to the races. And thank you, Tar Ether, for your Switch Prime subscri subscription there. As Chesame is about to go into the back to take out Lando, while Chris is heading up for his, what, fifth climb into Turtle Death Mountain here. Yeah, he's done quite a few climbs up, but they've all been high value plays. So, you know, while you try to minimize them, he made the right call every time. Yeah, I know, and it's paid off lots for him. But can't talk today. All right, so Christos is going to jump over the bridge and go up that way. Not a bad thing. Oh, he's going to take out the. Gotcha, no dead rocks for him today. So, while we still got Christos going, is there a chest that you normally call out, Vitasia? Well, I try to stick with the same chest until I actually get one right. So, right now, I am on number 18, and I've not gotten 18 right uh, for a bit. Gotcha. And chest may put some silver heads, arrows into some heads and takes Lamos out with a quickness. Picks up the, that Christo, Crystal. And he's going to head to Swamp as Christos is about to enter Ganon's Tower. So we'll be stopping that game here shortly. Get your final guesses in if you have not yet. Just a reminder, the winner, this is the top 64 bracket. The winner of uh, this matchup, if Christos does end up holding on to the lead and winning, will advance and will take on the winner of Alders versus Justin C uh, in the round of 32. So lots of... Lots of hype races still going on. A big 20 on one and five arrows there. Let's go left. Yeah, forced left side dip. Uh, I know there's several runners that have uh, started using the Dark Magician strat so-called is because you start here on the left side to give you a better chance to get a key and uh, go through until you get to the Staffolt's room and then head over to the right. Um, Rip the bomb. That. Yeah, no Bob. Didn't mean to cut you off there, but had to call out our mascot's death there. And we got a big five bomb upgrade, 10 bombs. A key, and last but not least, another key. As we see that the stun prize is a heart. So, uh, for those people who are unfamiliar, Bob, uh, you, we will we will not see Bob. Uh, Bob is a glitched out anti fairy. There's number uh, eight. Bob is a glitched out anti fairy that's at the that's uh, at one of the upper levels of this particular tower that you can only see if the item on the torch uh, is not gotten. So as soon as we get the item up on the torch, the glitch doesn't actually activate. Uh, he's been, Bob has been the mascot of Randomizer for a while because, hey, we like random glitches because this game is so well coded, you know. Number nine, just a five arrow capacity upgrade. Let's head over to the Rando Room, which is only seen during Randomizer. And there we have it. Chest number 11 was the correct guess. Did you already put... Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, so Cyclone ended up winning. Oh my gosh. GG Cyclone, one of our wonderful behind-the-scenes folks. 
uh, really does a ton of work in terms of getting these things set up for broadcast. So GG Cyclone, he's not a witch. He's he's watching it along, right along with the rest of us. Let's see some Ganon Ball Z action here. Christos gets through it. No big deal. Let's go to the gauntlet. And Chiss gets his seventh crystal, so we'll be joining Christos shortly up in Ganon's tower. Uh, you know, he's made up quite a bit of time, all things said, uh, from where he was earlier in this match um, he's uh, done quite well for himself just when you're up against a high caliber opponent as all of these people are in the tournament but especially someone like christos owen uh, if you make a single mistake he will make you pay yes as we've seen it just blow the seat apart here christos going ahead one two and three land most down for the second fight there He's out of here. Let's see some wizard rope action here with the Canis Mario like it's supposed to be used. Alright, and run right across this bridge for the second wizard rope ring. Christos doing well with that first lamp room. Gonna go into this last one here and get that knocked. That's interesting. I don't only really see a, a dash through there. And Christos is got enough keys to finish this out. Let's go ahead and grab that. I'm sure we'll see some anti fairy powdering here for a fill up on some hearts. No, Christos isn't even gonna fill up on magic. What the heck? And That's gutsy. That is gutsy. I know he's got a blue bottle, but wow, I do normally see some fill ups there. And Christos takes it down Troll Dorm 2 with no big deals as Chesame is entering into Ganna's Tower. And he opens the last treasure chest just for you, chat. That's, that's how much Christos Owen loves each and every one of you. Time for Geometry Razor Part 2 today. Uh, that was 2, 1, and he's upset with himself. Penalizes himself with the bulk. Nice double there. Well, that was a nice double even with that blue ball mixed into it. And we are done. Christos going ahead and bonking the door as we wait for the swag duck to take us out of here. All right, so Christos Owen has defeated Aghanim and is on his way to Mr. Blue Bacon. Uh, this is going to be relatively quick, I think. Well, as you pointed out earlier, he is a very skilled NMG runner, so having all these extra safeties, it's going to be quick. Interesting. Oh, and he's got a great setup here for spins. This is just perfect for him. Oh. 
Yeah, Christos really does need to be careful because a single Ganon hug would kind of kill him. Well, he does have a little bit of time to do. What is he doing? That. Wow, that's gutsy. This is just Christos showing off now. Yeah, he knows he's got this, so he's just full force messing around there. One, two, ooh, he got the glitch with Oh the my god, that was so good. One, two, big pig fried, get your bacon orders in now. <laughs> GG's to Christos. Okay. With that win, Christos is on to his way of the top 32. Absolutely. GG to Christos Owen. We'll meet the winner of Alders versus Justin Z in the round of 32. GG to Christos. We'll see if we can't get Christos over here. And Chris has finished with an official time of 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 53 seconds. Meanwhile, Chisame is on his way through the gauntlet, um, making very quick work. And GG to Christos Owen joining us, moving on to the round of 32. How's it feeling? Yo, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's feeling good. Um, so I've played four Tony matches so far, and each one I've just been playing better and better. So I'm feeling like I'm getting into a groove again. So I'm pretty happy with that match. Again, GG, and that whole decision of going to Eastern early is what busted this seed apart and set you to the lead, I would say. Going to Eastern, Ali? I Well, Eastern area, picking up the boots from Sahashla oh, and Sahashla. all that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah but... the, the main separator between the two of you was that Chiss, uh, with that early book, went to Desert first and saw the hook shot and couldn't really do anything about it. Um, he also Ouch. ended up yeah, yeah. He also uh, didn't get the the gloves from Zora. Like, his first lift upgrade was in Palace of Darkness. Wow, okay. That, that's extremely different to uh, my... See, it never even occurred to me that he wouldn't have done the early, like, item sequence. It seemed to just flow really nicely for me. Wow, okay, so he didn't... So I guess he did Aghanim, and then... What did he go straight to? Pot? Uh, he went to Skull Woods, got the bow, then went to Thieves Town, and then went over the pod. Okay, wow. Yeah, wow, that's very different routes. Which is fun. That's the joy of Rambo. It really was. We were kind of counting down. Uh, it's like, okay, what could happen? because we knew the early routing just optimized for where you were going and picking everything up. Like, okay, well, how can Chisme possibly get back into it? But everything, every play you made paid off in some way. It's like, well, this is not, not good for such an early route divergence that happened. I mean, Desert was going to be high on my priority list, but we had Fire Up and book, but we didn't have the gloves, so I couldn't beat the dungeon. And there's a fair chance that either a key or an item would have been on the torch. So like, without boots going to the desert is never great. So Sahashrala's heart seemed like the obvious choice. And then, depending on what I found there, I was either going to dive Easton or go to desert area. I completely understand that. That's sound logic. No, I gotta ask you, what was with the swag strats there towards the end of the Ganon fight with walking the fight rope? 
<laughs> it's not as bad as it looks. Like, you've got to be an idiot to do that and then fall in. Touch wood, I never do that and then fall in. But I yeah, as long, like, I was staying at least a tile ahead of falling in again. I know, but it just looks rather amazing from this end. Oh, well, hopefully it's entertaining. I guess that's what this whole tournament's about after all. Fun and entertainment. Oh yeah, it was incredibly entertaining, and we held our hearts for a second because we we're like, "What? Are you, what's going to happen, Christos? What are you doing?" <laughs> uh, I was a little annoyed I messed up Ganon. Actually, I didn't get the one and one. Um, I haven't seemed to have got the one and one on Ganon in four out of four matches now. So I, apparently, I need to practice Ganon. But overall, I feel like that seed went really good. I managed to skip the entirety of Village of Outcasts and the Sound which also happened in my previous um, matchup. And so, so far I've done four tournament matches, and in all four of them, Thieves Town has been a pendant, which is really annoying, because it's like when it's a crystal, it's a really obvious, quick play to go with no uh, chance of time loss. But when it's a pendant, I find it really difficult to work out when to go there. And just the way this went, I kind of always had better places to go and then kept finding something which then opened up something better than Thieves Town but I didn't expect to skip it I was expecting to have to end up going there eventually but then Maya came through for me which was pretty awesome yeah Maya we were thinking you know there's a lot of overworld to go and would you do that before Maya but don't and uh, French Vanilla Cane which uh, it's kind of interesting because this was broadcast not only <laughs> here on Speed Gaming. Yeah, I mean, it's like vanilla, but ish. That's the first time I've heard that term. That's really good. Uh, yeah, I think... Sorry, go on. And with that, Chessmay goes ahead and finishes up his Gand fight with a time of 1 hour, 36 minutes, and 58 seconds. Get your GGs in for him, and we'll get him in here shortly. Go ahead, Christos. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, so in the situation I was in, I had Pendant Thieves Down, Pendant Eastern, which was the green pendant, and then Maya Crystal. I kind of wish I'd just dived Maya before bothering with Eastern, um, because particularly with dungeons where you have to spend time searching for the big key anyway, and they're non-linear, so Maya is a really good example of that. Double dipping them really isn't so bad, because usually you're going to be exploring a fair portion of it anyway looking for the big key so i don't, really didn't feel like it was much of a risk diving maya without the cane i think people seem to think it's terrible time loss but in reality it's not so that's something which i see fairly often well i mean clearly it was the right strat and it it brought you kind of all the value and from that point on it was just kind of a hunt for the mirror uh, did you have any nerves going up to... Because you had a lot of climbs up Death Mountain. I think we counted by the end five climbs up Death Mountain. Did, were you kind of mentally ticking those off just because it's time loss every time you climb that? Uh, no, actually. So, uh, Total Rock was the obvious play. It was a crystal, and I could beat it. And the only thing I was missing was Mirror. So I knew that not being out to access Mimic Cave wasn't a problem. Um, and if it wasn't there, then I hadn't really lost anything. Because again, I would have had to have spent a large portion of it looking for keys and the big key anyway. So yeah, really, that was a no-brainer for me to do Total Rock. And then if I didn't find Mirror there, then it probably would have been Village of Outcast East Town, followed by the random overworld spots I hadn't done. But it's an interesting point about going up Death Mountain a lot. I honestly don't really take that into account at all. If a portion of Death Mountain is an appealing play, then I would just go there. Well, and wise words that I will I will take to heart and not count that so much myself in my own runs. Uh, in the meantime, Chisume, GG, joining us, uh, finishing with a very respectable time of that 1.36, uh, looks like 1.36.58, despite all the, the weird things that she ended up doing, still a very respectable time. GG to Chisume. GG's. GG's, Chris. Good game, dude. 
I've just um, been filled in on our early route divergence. So <laughs> it seems like we played this extremely differently. Yeah, I, I gambled that flippers weren't useful for anything. I was like, wait, it's, is it another Agaseed? I'm just going to do Aga now. We can do everything. And this is the same setup we had last time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think I, I did everything possible before going to Aga. But luckily it was, well, except for Easton. Um, but I'd done everything else, including finding the bottle on Death Mountain and then ch uh, turning that in for a sort of upgrade. <laughs> like, like, we needed two items still because I didn't have, like, the hammer. And I was just like, ah, I'm just going to do, do the dude. I was thinking, there's no way Flippers is locking two items for Dark World access. It's got to be Aga. And we, they, they've given us Hookshot. I'm just going to ignore Flippers. Because, well, Flipper's is how you get to West Dark World, so... And then Zora happened. Yeah, I can totally see that. It's kind of a red herring in a way. So, like, Aga was the play, but then... Flipper's to Zora was also the play. So, like, <laughs> it was both of them. <laughs> yeah, I think I cleared the rest of the world looking for anything. And then when I saw the Flipper's on Zora, I was like, oh no. There's 100%, 100% you have this. Oh dear. I really nearly fake flip it there as well after doing Ice Rod Cave, but I was like 20 rupees short. <laughs> so I was like, ah, just <laughs> go to Sashul as that. It was yeah. nice to be able to play a seed with Boots though. That's rare. Yeah, Boots that early was nice. It was useful for just Hookshot, was it? Don't remember anything in Kingston or Bonk Rocks. Uh, isn't that where Flippers were in Bonk Rocks? Bonk Rocks were oh, they were. It were Flippers. Kingston was the Butter Sword. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't find that sword <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> I totally forgot about Flippers. I thought it was Lamp for a second. It's like this isn't useful. Lamp was on Hobo. Like honestly, the early game, if you didn't go with the early desert bait. Like, I had about three minutes of just successive items. And it really didn't occur to me that you wouldn't. Like, I just assumed we'd both done the same play, really. It's when you're making something and it works and there's not really many alternatives, it's usually hard to imagine your opponent doing something different. Yeah, I figured, I, I figured Eastern was bait since then I went to desert and yeah. I ended up you need to do both, just in the right order. Or like, Sahasha. But yeah, something I can't remember any, anymore. That was way, way too long ago and I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kind of saw you do a double take at that hook shot, Chiss. I mean, you were like, oh no, I have to come back here at some point. And knowing that Christos had walked right over there and picked up the boots at Sahasrala, we were like, oh no, this is horrible. Yeah, as soon as I saw that, it's like, oh. This isn't good. If Chris went this way first, then he would have only dipped uh, Eastern once. And then that, that led to the early Aga play, which was right, but was wrong. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Randomizer is the real winner here. Yay! When in doubt, Randomizer is always the winner, and we're just the suckers who keep on playing. It's too addictive, man. <laughs> You're telling me. Those damn developers making this. I know, who are those jerks? I mean, really. Someone should really find them and write them a stern letter or something. You hear that, chat? Everyone needs to get together and write a very stern letter to whomever is the developer of Link to the Past Randomizer. Give them a piece of your mind. And by them, I think we all mean he, Vito. Exactly. Oh, uh, well, once again, GG, uh, Chisame and Christos. So, and Christos, moving on to the round of 32. Any kind of final thoughts from either of you guys before we try to wrap this up here? Uh, not really for me. Just thanks, you guys, for commentating. Looking forward to watching the VOD to see how different our plays were. And yeah, look forward to more matches and speaking. It was fun. It was a blast being in this tournament. Uh, thanks for the commentary, the tracking. Thanks to everyone. 
yeah, and thanks a lot, Shazam, for being very flexible with organizing matches this week. I know they weren't at the best of times for either of us, so I really appreciate that. And good games. All's good. Good games. Yes, absolutely. Thank you once again to Chisame and Christos Owen. Guys, if you haven't followed these guys yet on Twitch, what are you doing with your lives? Get over there and follow them. They are both amazing runners. You can learn so much from them. Uh, still more randomizer come up, up later today, but as we're getting farther into this tournament, we are starting to run out of games. We have an 8 p.m. match right here on Speed Gaming between Zelgadesian and Couch23. Uh, that's going to be pretty hype. Also at 9 o'clock over on Speed Gaming 3, we have Jay Copes for Life versus Jay Meesher. Uh, so tune in for that. And that's all the rando for tonight. Uh, we're, we're running out of games, guys. And with that, just quick shout outs to our tracker there. That was Carito. Make sure you give him a good high five. What's up? And with today, this has been What's Up with my co commentator, Batasia. We've enjoyed calling this match for you and being able to see Christos advance. Again, thank you for it and enjoy the rest of your day.